Hey everyone, I've been playing around with the volume builder inside Cinema 4D and running out some fog volumes using Redshift and I thought I'd go over what I've learned so far and some of the tricks to get around when setting up a fog volume builder inside Cinema. So I've got some examples up here and uh, what I'll do is just go over some of the basics so the basic setup and setting up the lights in order to work with volumes and then I'll quickly run through the example scenes that I have here. And you'll notice I do have a new attempt at foam. Uh, that got to be a little bit more in depth than I thought I could fit into this tutorial. So I've recorded a whole separate tutorial for that. And the link to that is down below in the description. So let's head on into Cinema 4D. So I've just got a basic scene here with a cube in a white space. So let me just hit uh, render here and I'll show you. Just a really basic scene. I've got a couple of lights, an area light and uh, HDRI. Uh, so what I want to do is just come down to our cube here and I'm going to hold down alt and go up to our volume builder tab and I will click on that and make the cube a child of the volume builder. And you can see immediately that uh, disappears from our render view, but we see a blocky mass over here in our viewport. Now I do see this because I have the display mode set to constant shading. If you had like hidden lines or lines on, you don't really see that, but you do see the, uh, the bounding box of the volume builder. So make sure you're in one of the uh, grout shadings, quick shading, or constant shading in order to see your voxels here. So under the volume builder, I'm going to change the volume type from sign distance field over to fog. You can see in the viewport, it updates into these small little dots instead of the big voxels. So we see that this still does not render in our viewport. All right, so in order to do that, let's go over to our Redshift materials and select a volume material. And we can apply that directly to our volume builder and still nothing. Down here, let's select these here in the RS volume node under channel, go down here and select volume builders, volume builder. And now this is, you see some of the other options here, explosion effects for X particles, turbulence FD and volume builders is included in this. So Cinema 4D volumes do work natively in Redshift. So we can select Volume Builder. And now we do have something in the viewport. It's a little weird though. We can see it's kind of floating above the floor. It's really dark. What we do have to do is go into our lights. And I will select both of these at once because we're going to go over to the Volume tab and we need our contribution scale up from zero. So let's drag that up to one. We can see now our lights are affecting our volume. So there's a few steps we need to go through in order to get this working. So you need to make sure the volume material has the volume builder in the channel and our lights are contributing to the volume. Now, under the volume builder, let's look at some of our options here. We've got the voxel size set to 10 centimeters. Now it's pretty big for our scene. You can see how spaced out these little dots are. So let's try doing that, taking that down to half, down to five, and a little bit better. Let's go down again to Okay, now we're getting a little bit closer to the floor here. You see our voxel size is big enough where there's a gap between our floor and the cube that's encompassing all of our voxels. So putting this down again, let's go down to one. And it's a little bit better. We can see in our viewport here, we've got a much denser dot matrix. And over here in our viewport, it's looking a little weird. So we can try this. Take this to the 0.5. Okay, it's kind of okay, but it kind of looks like we can see through it. It's kind of a weird thing, and I want to show you something here in a little bit, but if you've used the volume builder, the sign distance field volume builder before, you know it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. If we drag another cube into our scene, and we'll scale it down, and we'll just move it over. We'll try to put this... There we go. We can put this on the corner of our cube and drag it into the volume builder. And let's do a small cube. And under our volume builder, let's change the mode from normal to subtract. And nothing, not what I would expect to happen. So I was kind of frustrated at this, like not really understanding how this worked. So my understanding of the fog volume is that we've got a range of values here. We're going from zero, which is the black dots in the viewport up here, to one on the inside. Zero being basically like a transparent voxel to one being opaque. So the values in between would you know, be like 
0.01, 0.02, however dense your voxel grid is, so a range of values from 0 to 1. And my expectation would be that the small cube with its range of 0 to 1 will be subtracted out of the big cube. So our values of 1 on the inside of our small cube would be subtracted from the values of 1 on the inside of our large cube, leaving us with 0. So my expectation would be that the small cube would be kind of booled out of the large cube. And this is just not... I. I didn't really understand what was going on here. So I was playing around with this and noticed that if I added a fog curve layer up above without even adjusting anything. Now, if you're in a previous version of um, Cinema 4D, I am in uh, S22 in R21, R20. I did have to come down here and select this point on the curve and then it did update and then I saw what I'm seeing here. So you may have to come back and actually select one of these in order for this update to take effect. But now we're getting something a little bit more like what we'd expect, right? Like this is working like the other volume builder is working. And so if we take a look at this, we can see now that this is a completely dense fog here. And we can take this voxel size back up, like, like two. We can see that this still, you know, we're not getting that like transparent effect. I think we saw it like one. If we take this off in the small cube, you can see the difference here. It's kind of like a transparent look. But with the fog curve on, let's just turn the, this cube off. With that curve on, it seems to be working much more as expected. So if anyone has any explanation to this, I don't want to say it's a bug. I, I just don't really understand why that would make any difference. But uh, if anyone knows what's going on there, yeah, definitely uh, explain that to me in the comments. I'd love to figure out what's going on. So if we put our cube back, and turn it back on. See here we've got our fog volume rendering. And you will notice though that we've got this sort of, let me zoom in a little bit here, this sort of stair-stepping effect. And this is really just we're looking at the resolution of our voxel grid. And this is where, you know, doing like angled um, subtractions like this, you're gonna get that sort of like jagged edge. So our voxels are aligned uh, a little bit differently than this cube is angled. So if we take this down 2.5, should start to clean this up. And we're getting smaller steps. Now some other things we can do here. Uh, if we look at this cube under our volume builder, the small cube, we have some options here. Inside voxel fall off. Change this from 1 to, let's say, 5. Let that update. And... You can see here, we've got a much smoother transition between these two shapes. Let's take it up to 20. And we're sort of cutting this off, there we go. You can see here, we're starting the sort of dense fog going all the way up till it's transparent here. And that is 20 voxels, that distance. Now it's got, a, we have got another checkbox here, maximum voxel fall off. And what that means is the perimeter of this box will be at zero. And it will calculate the exact distance between the outside and the exact center point of our cube. The exact center point has a value of one. So that one has a opaque center point. And then this gets more and more transparent. Now, as we subtract this, it's opposite. So this is going to get more and more transparent in the center. So if we take that off, and go back to one. Now we're back to our original shape. We can do the same thing with our big cube. If we did maximum maximum voxel fall off, same thing happens. We started from the outside as transparent and then gradually get towards our full on opaque fog in the center with a value of one. Let's move on and take our cube back to one voxel fall off. We'll zoom out a little bit. Let's go over some of the other options here for adding layers or modification layers to our fog volume. The next one in our list, let's go from the curve, which we've already seen. Um, I guess I could open up the curve and actually 
show you here. So we have from zero to one, the way these values are mapped in our fog volume. But if we take this point here and drag it down, so we have zero to, I don't know, point, I don't know, it's like point two, point one something. You can see it starts to lower the density of our fog volumes. This gets to be a little bit more airy and ghost-like. Take this even further. It gets to be very light. It's almost not there at all. And that's just playing with these values. We're remapping the values between from zero to one now from zero to like point one. I'm just going to reset this to default zero to one and take a look at the next option here, fog range map. The fog range map is basically just a numerical version of the curve. I mean, we've got minimum input, maximum input, zero to one, and minimum output, max output, zero to one. So the same thing. So our output, instead of one, let's try 0.1. And we have that same effect. We start lowering this 0.05. We get that very thin fog ghostly look right there. Um, personally, I much rather um, the fog curve is much more intuitive to me uh, than the range map. But uh, if you need exact figures, the range map is the way to go. Next, fog add. So you can see bringing the fog add on top of our stack here, on top of our curve, brings us back to this sort of um, strange result where we're no longer subtracting the small cube from the larger cube. Um, but for this instance, I want to, instead of adding one, I want to add negative 0.5 to this stack. And I want to drag the curve up back on top. And so now we are kind of subtracting 0.5 from the whole thing. We can t turn that off. You can see subtle difference. Let's make that more apparent by subtracting 0.85, almost all of it. And we're getting that kind of same effect where we're bringing down the value. So it's a less dense fog volume. It's kind of, you know, multiple ways to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to delete the fog add and go to our next one. Now fog invert. This is interesting. So adding this on top of the stack again, uh, same sort of strange behavior, but if we drag that under the curve, it should now do what we want. Yeah. So now we've just inverted what is being subtracted from what. So now we have the large volume this cube being subtracted out of the smaller cube. I'm not sure what sort of situation that would be good for. Um, I haven't really found a, an intuitive way to utilize that. Um, so I will just, uh, I don't have any good examples for you. So maybe you guys can come up with something interesting to use the fog invert with. Next one, my favorite one, fog multiply. This, to me, is super powerful. I'm going to drag the curve back on top so we get our expected results here. Fog multiply. Um, so in this setting here, multiply, let's say I'm going to multiply this by zero. And the whole thing goes away now because every value in our voxel grid is now zero, which is nothing transparent. But since we can use fields which with each of these layers, if I drag in a spherical field and I'm gonna scale this down, we can see we're multiplying by zero inside of our spherical field. So now we're just deleting out part of our volume. The same way we use subtract with a cube, we can do the same thing with fields and a fog multiply. And this gets to be really powerful when we start to look at some of our other options here for ways we can limit the multiply. So, I mean, you know, formula field, linear field to fade out our fog volumes over distance. Um, you know, the, I'd say probably the most powerful one, in my opinion, the shader field, where we can put in a noise to drive areas of complete transparency. So if we go into our shader field, change the noise type to, I don't know, let's do like a uh, self or annoy. I'll just up the low clip. Down and increase the contrast. And for this effect, um, 
And for this effect, um, I kind of want to get a lot of white areas in this because white is going to be the areas that are going to be applying a zero value to our fog volume. So those are going to disappear. So let's get some contrasty areas like that. All right, and turn the volume builder back on. There, we can see we're using the shader Voronoi to delete areas of our fog volume. Uh, now on this, I should note, let's move the spherical field and the shader field down into our objects. Shader field. Under noise, we can animate our noise. And let's go with uh, 0.5. And we can check this out here. Do animate, let's turn off our render view. And we can see how a little preview here is animating. So we want that to happen inside of our fog volume. So that is animating. Now let's, for this instance, let's increase our voxel such this runs a little bit quicker and take a look. Okay. So we've got our chunky voxel grid and our chunky volume. Let's hit play and see if we can get a preview here. And as you can see, no animation. It is not running. So it took me a while to figure this out. Under the shader field, under refresh field, we've got the noise type at the very bottom, refresh frame. You need to check that on. Now go back and our noise is animating through our volume. In my opinion, that should be on by default, but it is not. You need to check that on to get the animation to run in the volume. Okay, so let's go back and check out the last option here under our stack, a fog smooth. And let's take a look here and render this. And it does what you expect. I will point out though, so if you notice our bounding box, our original cube, is still containing all of our voxels. The smoothing happens inside. So this blurring effect that's happening in the fog smooth is happening from the zero point of the outside perimeter inward towards one. You know, when I first started playing around with this, I thought, oh, it'd be nice to really kind of blur outward to extend the fog volume out. So it blurs in both directions. But that's not the case. So you're really just sort of limited still by the bounding box, but we're blurring the values, the interpolation between the values inside the cube. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so we can exaggerate this in our smooth tab. We have um, the operator type, Gaussian, mean, and median. So I'll leave it in Gaussian and then change the voxel distance from two to five and let that update. We can see the volume builder calculating down here. So now see so a much cloudy, foggier volume, much smoother and softer. Um, iterations, you know, as you'd expect, just how many times this is being applied. So the higher this number, the more iterations, the blurrier, the foggier, the volume. Um, I want to change this back to the default by right clicking on the arrows here. Now we're back to two and one. Mean does something a little bit different. It's a little bit tighter of a smoothing effect. So it's not as large. So you still get more, I don't know, it seems like it um, kind of preserves more detail. And median is an interesting effect. Uh, I'm gonna turn this off so we can go back to the regular sharp edge and I'm gonna take this to median and then turn it back on. So we can see the effect here and what this is doing. It may be easier to see actually without the fog multiply on. So we're just looking at these edges. And let's uh, zoom in. Median is kind of uh, kind of cool. It almost uh, sort of rounds the edges. We almost got like a bevel effect. So voxel distance up to five. I'll kind of show you. Look at this, like a bevel. And we get the uh, stair stepping back because of our, uh, you know, sort of revealing our voxel size. But um, you know, another another fog smooth on top of it, maybe set to instead of Gaussian, set it to mean. Let's see if we can smooth these out. There we go. Nice sort of rounded edged fog volume. Yeah. All right. Coming back here, let's zoom out a little bit. 
wanted to go back over into the redshift volume node. We've got the scatter coefficient and on the next tab down, the absorption coefficient. These are both set to one. Adjusting these also affects the look of the fog volume. We can take these values and change them and make the volume look denser or more light by playing with these values. So the absorption coming down, you can see this gets very bright. Same thing with the scatter coefficient. We take these down pretty far. We can start to get the same sort of, well, if we go down too far, we're sort of amplifying the light inside, but we can get this to look very, very soft and sort of adjust how the light interacts with this. So this sort of like, uh, you know, if you're going for like puffy clouds, you're gonna wanna adjust these, the scatter coefficient and the absorption coefficient to pretty low numbers to allow a lot of light in. And adjusting these, we can get, if we bring these down, actually, I want to show you. So in situations like this, where we've got a scatter coefficient over one and the absorption coefficient down pretty low, you can see how this is now looking almost like an emissive material. So we're amplifying the light now that's coming into this fog volume. So this is glowing. Now we do have an option to control just that and under the emission. Now this does offer another channel uh, to control emission, and you could go down into the volume builder and select volume builder again um, to turn on this emission. So let's take these back to one and one. Um, but I, if you don't want this to be glowing or emitting light, you can just leave this blank. Let me just delete this. And as far as I know, there's not any additional information, um, you know, for like color channel or an emission channel. There's no way that I know of, of separating out an inf like the information that's coming from Cinema 4D under the volume builder into a different sort of emission channel or scatter or color channel. Um, if somebody knows a way to do that, please, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. Um, that'd be great to know, like, you know, uh, setting a spherical field here to apply only an emission part of your fog volume would be super useful. But as far as I know, uh, it, you just get uh, the one set of, just the single set of data for this fog volume. So all of these are controlling the same thing. Um, so back to the scatter coefficient, I do want to show you there's... Um, setting this let's go a little bit brighter and get this to be a little bit more light the tint effect we can adjust the color to this so we do like an orange and a little bit goes a long way on this uh, you can see here um, we can tint this whole fog volume with this color here and also with the absorption coefficient tint down here so we go a little bit like more red you can see these combine a very intense way so um, you know bringing up the absorption will kill off some of that extra light and bringing these back down we can still get that same light airy look and it's just a uh, push and pull and I think a lot of this also has to do with um, you know these numbers may be much different in your scene if your scene scale is different if the um, if your fog volume is not uh, the same size, uh, these numbers will probably be uh, a little bit different. Another option, oh, actually, you know, I do want to show you. So uh, if we take this all the way down, we can get some interesting effects. We take the scatter off completely. We're now only sort of tinting the absorption of light through this volume. I think it's uh, kind of an interesting effect where, you know, some beautiful gradients uh, can happen in here. And so I, you know, interesting, it could be some interesting ways to uh, utilize this sort of effect uh, without uh, adding in the sort of, um, the sort of the volume look, we get sort of a flat, smooth gradient. And that's sort of the same effect I use for uh, this poster here, uh, where I've just rendered out a camera panning along over the uh, fog volume. I can actually pull it up here. Yeah, so this scene here, where I've just got a bunch of shapes I've thrown into this volume builder, uh, adding and subtracting. And I've used a uh, cache layer here to just keep this pretty simple. So I just have a um, camera animation sweeping around this shape. 
And what I have done here is just taking the scatter coefficient almost to zero, just 0.01, just, a, just barely any scattering going on and a very low absorption coefficient. And instead of tint, uh, I've changed the values of the ramp here, the scatter ramp. And that also allows for some interesting effects. We can go um, from really subtle gradients. So if I actually switch back, turn this off real quick, switch back to our other scene now. So I'm gonna change this to 0.01. I'm gonna come down into our absorption remap and add a point here without dragging it left or right. I'm gonna come down and adjust the saturation. Do another one here. I'm gonna take the white value here at the end, which represents our opaque uh, fog volume. It took me a little bit to understand how this works. So it's the same sort of idea that the perimeter of this fog volume has a value of zero to one uh, going towards the center. And it's the same here. So this would be zero all the way to one, white being the opaque or on voxel that represents the fog. So if I change this from white to, let's say like a deep blue, we're getting that as our result. And the fall off is pretty quick here. So if I wanted the edge of this to be a different color, I'm gonna need to come in here and Adjust it pretty close. Let's see. See the effect there. Just another option as, uh, you know, maybe it could be interesting for some non-photorealistic effects, um, something more graphical. Yeah, I'll undo that. Come back and re-enter in our volume builder. Did want to bring up another scenario that uh, I did run into and it took me a little bit to figure out what was going on. So let's make a new volume builder. So I'm gonna do a sphere and just pull that into our objects and hold on alt and drag this into volume builder one. Now volume builder one has no material and dragging this material on it nothing. Well, we need to change it to a fog volume, but it doesn't render. It shows up here, but it's not rendering. Take our voxels down to like one. Let's do it two for this. So it speeds up. So we can see it here in our viewport, but it is not rendering. And that's because each volume needs its own material. It's referencing a specific volume builder here. This isn't just generically the Cinema 4D volume builder. If we come down here to volume builders, we can see both listed volume builder and volume builder one. So if we say volume builder one, our original volume builder turns off. Now we're left with our second volume builder. Let's take this down to one, that looks, whoops. Another thing I should mention, under the sphere, we have the same option as the uh, sign distance field to take a low poly primitive and say perfect primitive so that the volume builder does not take into account the faceted low poly exterior, just renders a perfect sphere for the volume builder to uh, populate the voxels inside of it. So what we need to do in order for both of these to show up is to go and create a, another volume material and we'll go into our volume material and change the tint to a bright blue, like light green. And now we will apply this to our volume builder one and select volume builder one and come back into our original uh, redshift volume material and change the channel back to our original volume builder. And now we've got both of these in the scene that we can control individually. Another gotcha, coming in here and reorganizing things and staying on top of what everything is. We're just gonna call this volume sphere and it disappears. And we're gonna call this volume cube disappears. These do not update automatically. These, the channels in our redshift volumes need to be updated manually, which is a bummer. Now we need to go to volume builders and reselect volume sphere to our original volume material and change it back to volume cube. It took me a while to realize what was going on there. 
All right. So, um, all right, let me run through some of these example scenes. So I have the, um, landscape fog effect. You see here, it's a really subtle, slow moving, uh, fog in this sort of sci-fi environment. Okay. So the way I set this scene up is very simple. All I have is a, um, let's go to our perspective view here, just a landscape object, uh, with a couple of area lights up above and I have a cube in my volume builder that's just covering my scene here. And I've got that, if I turn off the volume builder here, I can show you the cube. It's a really simple cube that just peeks up into some of these valleys. So I've turned that into a volume. And in our volume builder, let's see here, our cube, and I've got maximum voxel fall offs checked so that the top of this cube is very transparent. And it's only until we get to the middle of our cube that we start to get the uh, densest part of our fog. So we get a nice fall off from the top to the center. So basically from the top of our fog to the uh, valley of our landscape. And inside of the volume builder, I should say, actually, before I go into that, the uh, cube, turn off the landscape. The cube has a displacer applied where I'm actually displacing the mesh to wireframe. You can see my mesh and under the displacer, I've got the shading set to noise with a very low animation speed. So if I hit play here, you can see this very gentle undulation. And I can bring that deformed displaced mesh into the volume builder and the volume builder will calculate each frame and adjust the bounding box of the fog volume based on this displacement. So I've got this subtle undulation going on the actual mesh and then in the volume builder, we'll turn that back on. I've got a fog multiply set to 0 0.001. So almost, completely off. Just getting a hint of the mesh. I wonder if I can render this, but I've got a random field under the fall off. If I turn that random field off you can see it's pretty much gone, nothing there, but the random field is limiting the effect of that multiply to only where this noise is. And I've got the noise set to gaseous with a scale of 50 and an animation speed of 50. So this noise will be animating inside of our fog volume and basically deleting out the areas where this noise gets to be white. And on top of that, I've added another, just go back to second multiply, or I'm adding another same thing where I'm multiplying by 0.05, almost gone completely. But I'm still keeping some of the fog there on the top. So getting that like natural fall off at the top of the cube and under the field tab, I have another random field set to gaseous with a larger scale and a different animation speed. So these two are combining to create this look. So if I turn the landscape back on, let me zoom out here. <laughs> You can see the effect. If we zoom out here, you can see it's only in this one area. I don't have to render Redshift environment or the fog. And some of these things, I you know, I know you can plug in a noise into the um, you know Redshift environment to get sort of these volumetric effects. But I do find this to be a little bit easier for me to understand and place things and art direct instead of doing like scene wide effects. The ability to just place the fog in one specific location is super beneficial. So I was really excited when I uh, found out that Redshift uh, could render these fog volumes directly. I want to move over to the uh, a more cartoony version. So I've got this smokestack um, that I've animated in a way that's um, a little bit more stylized. Um, it's cartoony. So I can pull open the, see the scene file here. So I wanted to see what uh, what would happen if I went for a more uh, stylized or cartoony look and uh, came up with a soft body dynamic simulation inside of the volume builder. So if I turn off our volume builder here and our subdivision surface, I don't need the render view for this. 
come out of the camera view here. As you can see, I've got, turn off this tube. We can watch the dynamic simulation. So I've just run this, uh, kind of this expanding sphere where this sphere here has been uh, given a soft body dynamics tag. I've, uh, let's go over here to dynamic settings expert, I'm sorry, to dynamic settings general. You see I've turned off gravity here and I've given this sphere a soft body tag and I've taken the structural way down along with the shear and flexion way down. No stiffness, but a lot of pressure, 18 pressure. And I've also applied a uh, field force with a random field and a solid. So the solid is giving a direction up and the random field is adding in some random motion. So that is being applied to our sphere that is sort of growing and expanding out of this tube. So I've taken that and thrown it into a subdivision surface, smooth this out. Uh, and inside the subdivision surface, I've added two displacers. And I've given these displacers a noise, but I've set the noise to world. So that means that this, the noise is stationary and our sphere is moving through this noise. And that sort of gives that effect like uh, the smoke is sort of billowing up through some turbulence. So all we do then is just uh, drop that into the volume builder. I've cached the animation, which makes this render much quicker. So I've turned off the cache layer here so we can go back in to take a look at each of these layers. So I've got the fog curve, which I don't believe is doing anything. It's just sort of correcting, like as we've seen in the last examples, just sort of making sure our fog volume reacts the way we expect it to. On top of that, I have a fog smooth. Let me turn these off and take a look at the... So this is the a render of just the fog volume straight out of just straight from the subdivision surface into the volume builder. And I'm adding a fog smooth just at the default settings. You see it sort of softens that up a little bit. And then I've added a secondary fog smooth. It does have a linear field. So we'll let this calculate and let's zoom in here. We'll see what this is doing. You see the top of this is much smoother than the bottom. So basically as this goes up into the air through this linear field, it's getting smoothed more and more. So we're getting full smoothing effect up here at the top. I'm just limiting the secondary fog smooth down here at the bottom. So we're still getting the undulating surface becoming smooth on top. And on top of that fog smooth, I have a fog multiply where the, mm, let's go back here. The filter, it's set to 0 0.05, so it's almost zero. And so that multiply is multiplying everything except what's in this linear field and this random field. So we're getting this sort of um, fade out effect. You can see here this linear field. Turn it back on. So the linear field here is fading this effect off closer to the bottom. So we're getting this multiplication of zero up here, or excuse me, not zero. So we have this set to 0 0.05 we're in this hazy view here. Now, truth be told, I should have spent more time on this. Um, look at the example. I mean, it's a pretty harsh cutoff. You can see the linear field right in here. We're just getting this line as it's fading. So adding in a, um, you know, for instance, this random field should probably be set to something like overlay. And let's see here, what size are we at here? So maybe like, maybe 200. Yeah, maybe something like that to just sort of break up that line. So speaking of that sort of effect of uh, layering up the noises uh, I have this example here where I've rendered this sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, foggy, hazy mist inside of this tank. So I'm using a shader field set to box creation space. So you have the option to do objects below where you are applying the shader field to, you know, a cube or a sphere or whatever um, piece of geometry you have in the volume builder. But uh, this option allows you to actually just create 
a um, box of uh, whatever dimensions are entered in here. So I have a 90 by 68 by 60 centimeter cube, uh, which I've made here. So if I take the tank off, you can see this is what I'm creating here with just the shader field. Inside the shader field, I'm using a layer shader where I've stacked up different uh, Cinema 4D noises. So in the first base layer, I've got the VL noise and a scale of 240, so it's pretty big in my scene. And I've uh, you know, cranked up the low clip and increased the contrast to try to get uh, some more of these black and white values. And that'll give um, you know more contrast to the fog volume, so more areas will be completely gone, nothing, and some will be completely dense. Um, so I've just stacked up, you know, this is just a regular noise with a big scale, um, a Luca noise, uh, animation speed, um, changed the high clip and just started stacking these things up to get the uh, kind of look I was going for. Um, and, you know, another thing, don't forget, refresh frame checked so that the animation does play through in the shader field volume. Uh, back into the volume builder stack, I've got the fog multiply set to zero uh, with a linear field. And the linear field is just sort of fading out from the top. You can see here, I've got this field from full on up top to fading off here. So we are getting this sort of nice fade out from the top to the middle section. I'm using a fog add with a, another shader field. I am adding one and I've got a shader field with a linear field mask. And what this is, I wanted to get a more dense bottom area. If I turn this off, actually you can see. So it's getting sort of this all over effect things here so I can turn off the fog multiply and so this is um, just the shader field working and you can see here we've got whoops we've got our layered noise creating this uh, this foggy volume so adding on the fog multiply on top this is where the linear field is fading down from the top towards the center get this nice fade out, but I wanted the bottom to, you know, look like it was like sort of emitting this smoke. So I've used a fog add and given it a shader field with some animated noise and a, let me go back here. Oops. And I'm using a mask with a linear field. So I'm basically fading off from the bottom up. So this linear field here is on at the bottom and then fading off here. So we're giving this um, additional data here and just filling in the gaps at the bottom, but it's still moving and it's still undulating. And back here, I've got a fog smooth just to smooth out a little bit. And I think my things are pretty low here. Yeah, I'm using a median and just one and strength of 4% just to give it a little bit of smoothness. And I'll just turn the tank back on. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a stylized effect. You know, it's not, the smoke isn't really interacting uh, with the bounds of the box or, um, you know, really uh, being emitted from the bottom, but uh, I think it's a pretty good fake. So for this last example, I have um, sort of an interesting setup. It's super simple, but uh, I like the idea of creating the sort of wall of fog that um, you know objects could sort of like fade away into, um, but the this wall would still be able to um, you know accept shadows and um, you know glowing objects would still glow inside of it. So it's a kind of a cool thing, but it's super simple. I mean, really, this is just a the same thing we set up uh, from the beginning. This uh, cube. And um, I've just put this cube into the volume builder and I've given it a uh, inside voxel fall of five. So it's a little bit uh, softened, um, but I'm putting a 
pretty big uh, fog smooth on top. So it's really giving this um, a pretty big fall off here. And uh, for the um, settings of the texture, the volume texture, I've just tinted the scatter coefficient a you know, pretty bright yellow and left the tint of the absorption uh, the same. And just played with these numbers until I liked the density, until I liked um, you know how much the chandelier was sort of fading off into the background. So if I, you know, for instance, like take down the absorption, you see this gets much brighter. Um, I take this down too, you can see we'll be able to start seeing more and more of the chandelier as this gets less dense. See, now we can see all the way through it into our HDRI. Let's just undo that. Uh, an interesting thing to note, if we did want to maybe make these fake candle things glow, if we grab, uh, I have an emissive material here, I'm just gonna drag onto the chandelier object and then limit it to the selection I've already made of these little lights. I mean, it works okay. We've got some interaction here with the, with the fog. Um, if we look in here in our light material, I just have under overall, the emission set to this blue with an emission weight of 10. If I crank that up to like 55, let's say, it's just something crazy. You can see this sort of um, you know, glowing effect inside of the, inside of the fog. But uh, I wondered if maybe a better solution to this was to utilize the Redshift Mesh Light. Um, so we can compare the difference here. I'm just gonna make that polygon selection invalid so that should turn this off. There we go. And we turn on our lights. Oh, did they get messed up? There we go. And I have a mesh light here. So just an area light set to shape instead of rectangle. I've got it on mesh and it is set to the lights geometry. So if I turn that on, so you can see it's a similar effect. Um, but I have a feeling that this is going to be a little bit more accurate and it's probably going to render a little bit better than using the um, the emissive material to look at just these lights. So it's close, but I do feel like this may be interacting with the fog volume in a more realistic way. Um, I don't know for sure. Oh, I did want to go over one other thing. Uh, I forgot. Splines work really well inside of the volume builder. Um, this uh, example scene here, I was just playing around with uh, some of these uh, fog volumes and um, just drew a really quick spline and just went into the volume builder and just dragged the spline right in. And inside of the volume builder, when you drag a spline in, you get the option uh, for radius and density. So right now I have the radius set to nine and density of one. I think this comes in at a kind of a low value where you get this sort of stepping. It's like spheres are uh, generated along this spline. Um, so setting this to one uh, fills that out. And the radius I just set, you know, um, what's it coming at? Set this to default, 15. This big chunky volume. Let's set it back to nine. Another cool thing is we have the scale along uh, options. So we can drag this down and scale splines right inside of the volume builder, which is great. I mean, yeah, you can throw pretty much anything into the volume builder, like any splines. You can even do um, a hair object and set the hairs to render as splines. And so each of the, uh, you know, hair splines, you get this sort of effect, which should be really interesting. It even works with the dynamics, um, the hair dynamics. So it's super powerful. So obviously I'm just playing around with this scene, but I was really excited about the options that the fog volumes uh, give. And I think it's a kind of a unique look and there's a lot of options um, between changing the colors and the gradient between values inside the fog volume or giving a really dense um, mesh. And I'll show you in the, um, what I've come up with uh, to replicate foam uh, in the uh, tutorial that's linked down below. But 
really looking at um, ways to vary some of the the way I'm texturing or way I'm uh, showing objects in uh, animations and in still lives and um, some of the renders that I've been creating. So I thought this was uh, really interesting and I was really happy and excited with the results. So I thought I'd share uh, with you what I've uh, come up with so far. So if you like this and you're interested in taking an even deeper dive, I've got another tutorial linked down in the description where I take another pass rendering out foam using this fog volume technique. Thanks so much, everybody.